This video will take you into a layer house to see how eggs are moved through the house and the proper method to obtain egg samples. As seen in this graphic, layer houses contain several banks of cages divided by walking aisles. These cages may be single tier, while others will have multiple tiers. Now, let's move to an actual layer house and follow the path of the eggs from the point of lay to where they exit the laying house. As you enter the layer house, you will see egg elevators at the end of each row. Looking down the walking aisle, you can see three tiers of cages along each side of the aisle. And at the bottom of each tier of cages, you'll see the egg collection belt. From this angle, it's easier to see the eggs on the belts as they move toward the egg elevator at the end of the row. Here, the eggs are moving along the collection belt to the transfer point. The eggs move from the egg collection belt onto the transfer rollers and are picked up by the egg elevator. You can see the eggs moving on to the egg elevator as well as eggs moving up from a lower tier. After picking up all the eggs from each tier's collection belt, the elevator takes the eggs to the opposite side of the elevator and down to the house's common egg collection belt. The eggs are counted as they move on to the common collection belt and join the accumulation of eggs. The eggs you see in front of the eggs being dropped off from the elevators come from previous elevator rows and, in some cases, from other houses in the production facility. Here you see eggs from all the rows and possibly other houses accumulating and moving out of the house. This belt continues through all the houses and into the packing area. There are a number of things needed to properly take egg samples. Some of the sampling materials need to be packed to take into the layer house and other samples need to be packed and made available in tubs outside the layer house. This is a list of the materials that need to be packed into tubs and made available outside the layer house. Respirators individually bagged and sterilized for each team member. Gloves. Tyvek suits. Enough for each team member size and a few extras. Hair nets. Boot covers. Enough for each team member size and a few extra or footed suits. Pen and paper. Scissors to cut suits and boot covers off. Trash bags for suits and other trash. Extra respirator and cartridges. Hand sanitizer. Paper towels. Ethanol spray bottle to clean masks and shoes between houses. Hand wipes. Camera. A crates. Eight boxes, seals, five two fives, packaging tape, paper, markers, shipping labels or shipping number, and cardboard or poster board to cover bottom seal. In addition to the supplies that are packed in tubs and left just outside the layer house, there are a few supplies that you will need to have in your car. The list you see is what you should have available in your car. Ice chest with water and snacks. Bucket with bleach spray. 70% ethanol spray and scrub brush. Trash bags to double bag trash before leaving the facility. Do not allow this bag to go in-house or touch the ground. Although housing systems that utilize cages vary in design, the concept for sampling is the same. As seen in this graphic, layer houses contain several banks of cages divided by walking aisles. These cages may be single tier, while other houses will have multiple tier systems. Note the numbering system for the rows and tiers. When taking egg samples, a total of 1,080 eggs will be collected. You divide the total number of eggs to be sampled, 1,080, by the number of rows in the house, in this case, six. Therefore, you collect 180 eggs from each of the six rows. 
In the example shown, you have three tiers on each row. You divide the number of eggs for each row, 180, by the number of tiers, 3, which means you collect 60 eggs from each tier. Note that at the end of a row, there are two cages, one on each side of the row, for each tier. Therefore, you collect 30 eggs, one flat, of eggs from each side of the row for each tier. With this plan in mind, let's go inside a high-rise layer house and see where we collect these samples. Using this example, you will need to take 42 flats and 3 boxes into each house. You will need to pre-tape and label all boxes and place seals with covers over bottoms. At this point, the egg elevator belt connection, you can take a sample. Using the 6 row 3 tier example, you'll want to collect one flat of eggs from each tier on each row. However, you don't want to simply collect the first 30 eggs in the row to fill your flat. Note the speed of the belt and the length of the row. You should space the collection of your eggs for each flat so that you collect eggs from the entire length of the row. In high-rise and conventional egg housing systems, this would probably mean collecting one out of every 20 to 30 eggs moving across the collection point at the end of the belt as it transfers eggs to the elevator. This number, 20 to 30, will be very different when collecting eggs from belts in aviary housing systems. In manual conventional housing systems, there are no egg belts to collect the eggs. The number of egg samples would be determined in the same way, but the eggs would need to be manually collected onto the flat as you walk down the aisle. You would need to space your collection of egg samples so that the flat represents the entire length of the row.